Chapter 26, Contingency Contracting, Token Economies, and Group Contingencies. First, we'll start with the contingency contract. These are also referred to as behavioral contracts. And these are a document that specifies a contingent relationship between the following. The completion of a specific behavior and access to a specified reinforcer. Components of a contingency contract include the following. The description of the task or the behavior. The reward or the specified reinforcer. And lastly, the task record. The description of the task should include the following information. Who will perform the task and receive the reward? What is the task to be performed? When the task must be completed? And how well the task must be completed? The reward component should include the following information. Who will judge the task completion? What is the reward or the specified reinforcer? When will it be delivered? And lastly, how much of the reward the person will receive. And the last component of a contingency contract is the task record. And the task record is where you record progress. It helps to regularly review the contract. And it helps for those involved to remain focused and gives them feedback on their performance. Now, how do contingency contracts work? Typically, a package involves reinforcement, rules, and response prompting, and contingency contracts can even be a self-contract. Steps to developing a contingency contract include the following. First, hold a meeting to discuss how the contract works and goals. Second, identify tasks the individuals can and already do perform. Third, identify potential contracting tasks. Fourth, identify potential rewards. And lastly, write the contract. Things to consider when writing a contingency contract. Is the behavior already in the learner's repertoire? Is it something that they can already perform? Does the behavior result in a permanent product? Is it something we can measure after the behavior has occurred? And what is the reading ability of the learner? And if they can't read, how else can we present the contract to them? When evaluating contracts, Focus on the objective measures of the target behavior. So for example, if I wanted to focus on attending behavior, but the student isn't completing any work, I might want to relook at how I'm measuring that. And now let's talk about token economies. And a token economy is a behavior change system with three major components. The first component is a specified list of behaviors to reinforce. The second component are tokens or points for admitting those behaviors. And then the third component is a menu of backup reinforcers that the learner can exchange the tokens or points for. And it's important to remember that the effectiveness of tokens as reinforcers really depends on how powerful the backup reinforcers are. Designing a token economy includes selecting the tokens, identifying the target behaviors or the rules, selecting the menu of the backup reinforcers or what the learner can earn, establish the ratio exchange, specify when or how the tokens will be dispensed and exchanged, and then doing a field test. Selecting tokens. An example of tokens could be washers, checkers, coupons, poker chips, tally marks, holes punched in cards. 
Some considerations when selecting tokens include making sure that the items are safe. Um, you want to make sure that you can control for counterfeiting and bootlegging, meaning if you're using raffle tickets, you want to make sure that they can't recreate those tokens and cheat the system. Um, you want them to be durable, so make sure they can last over time, accessible, so something that you can continue to have access to as well as them. Um, cheap, so you don't want to spend too much money on creating or obtaining these tokens. And then lastly, you want to make sure that the token itself is not a reinforcer, right? It's all about delayed reinforcement. So if the token itself becomes reinforcing, and then you're doing more of an immediate reinforcer, and then um, you can run into issues with satiation. Identifying target behaviors and the rules. Remember to select measurable and observable behavior. Um, you can always go back and review chapter three when it comes to this part of the token economy. You wanna specify the criteria for task completion. So what is considered a, a correct response before earning the token? Um, start with a, number, a small number of behaviors. So you don't wanna to target too many behaviors for the token. You wanna to try to target maybe one, to no more than three behaviors at a time. You want to make sure that the learner has the prerequisite skills um, so that we know they can build upon uh, behaviors that are already in their repertoire. And it is okay to ind individualize a token economy. The next part of a token economy is to select a menu of backup reinforcers. When selecting your backup reinforcers, you want to try to use naturally occurring activities as much as possible. Um, so things that um, it could be privileges, things that they'll make contact with in their environment. Like you don't want to choose something that would be hard to obtain. Um, you can also use tangibles and edibles, and oftentimes you'll start off with those types of reinforcers before moving on to activities or privileges. And you want to make sure you're following all ethical and legal rules. So, you know, you're not uh, depriving them of basic needs, right? They don't need to earn those. Those are their own rights. Establish a ratio of exchange. The initial ratio should be small. And then after that, you would adjust for maintenance. So that would mean um, initially you want them to earn a reinforcer when you're first teaching the exchange. And then after that, you would adjust by increasing the criteria, maybe changing the prices of certain things on the backup reinforcer. And it'd be a continuous adjustment as the learner was making progress. Then you want to establish a procedure of how to dispense the tokens or how to give them out, where they will be stored. If you're using pennies, would you provide a container? If you were using a point system, and then establish a procedure of how to exchange the points or tokens for the backup reinforcers. Some common procedures might be having like a store, um, and then initially you would have the store open frequently, maybe every day, and then you can start fading that to have it being open once a week, at the end of the week, and more intermittently. And then you want to field test the token system. So in conducting a field test, before you actually start the system, you would tally the tokens um, that you might have given the learner without actually giving them. So you're gonna observe, you would maybe just make note of, okay, this is how many tokens they probably would have earned in this time frame, And then from there, you're going to determine, you know, you can determine what the exchange ratio will be, and then you can make adjustments from there. So if I know in 20 minutes they can earn 10 tokens, right, then I would keep in mind, you know, at the end of the day, the max they can earn would be a certain amount uh, based off of that observation, uh, and then the minimum amount. And then I want to think about how I'm adjusting my exchange ratios. Battles. You want to make sure that you're very matter of fact when the learner doesn't earn any tokens 
And you also don't want to nag them. Um, when you're redirecting them, make sure that you stay neutral and try to avoid confrontation about the tokens. And now let's talk about whether or not to include a response cost. Most token economies do not include a response cost at first. Response costs are supposed to decrease a behavior, so in theory, it is a punishment procedure. So before you can implement it, you want to make sure that the learners know why they are losing tokens. It's also important to make the costs fit the severity of the behavior. So for example, aggression would probably cost more than, let's say, um, a verbal protest. Right? You want to make sure that this, the fine um, matches the crime. And lastly, avoid having the learners go quote unquote in the hole or in the negative or in the red because if they continue to lose points more than they earn points, they're going to lose motivation. Now we'll discuss implementation of the token economy. During the initial training of the token economy, make sure to describe the procedure to the learners, model the procedure for token delivery, and model the procedure for token exchange. You may need to do ongoing training such as booster sessions occasionally to make sure that the learner continues to understand and that those implementing the token economy are all on the same page. Token economy management issues. Teach the learner how or where to store the tokens and you want to make sure it's in a secure location. Uh, discourage hoarding and encourage savings in some students. So what happens when they hoard is if they don't spend the tokens in a certain amount of time and they just keep collecting them, um, they could use that as a time to kind of um, slack in their behaviors, right? They'll figure because they have enough, maybe the next couple days, they don't have to do anything because they have more than enough tokens to still get what they want. So thinking about that when you're establishing the rules. Um, and then you want to make uh, special considerations for chronic rule breakers. So again, you do want to individualize it so that the students are successful. Withdrawing the token economy. With a token economy, you want to plan for maintenance and generalization, and you want to start thinking about that early. So what is it going to look like when you start fading the token economy? Make sure to pair tokens with social approval, and then you can increase the responses needed to earn tokens. So increase that criteria. And then you can work on decreasing the access to the reinforcer when they've earned it, or change the prices of certain things on the backup reinforcer menu, um, increase number of natural reinforcers, and then systematically increase the price of more desirable items. And then think about how you can um, fade the physical evidence of the token over time. So maybe you got start with you know, the tokens with the Velcro on the token strip, um, maybe you go to coins, maybe you go to points, tally marks on a sheet. Things to consider when implementing a token economy is that sometimes they can be intrusive and difficult to implement. So, you know, for example, when you are giving them the tokens, what does that look like in a large group? Um, it can be cumbersome, but when implemented correctly, it's effective. Um, and sometimes it's so effective that we don't plan to remove it or how we're going to generalize it. Um, and then we also want to make sure we don't, you know, we're not violating federal mandates when we're implementing a token economy. And we kind of talked about that earlier. So, um, you know, we can't deprive them of food or any of those rights and making sure that we're following those legal guidelines.